So I wanted to dive into Carolina Panthers, Bryce Young, a lot of issues going on in Carolina, and a lot of people are beating up Bryce Young, and there's no question he's got to be better. He's got to play better. But I just wanted to take you guys through the third down, uh, the third downs that they had last week against Chicago. And, you know, because to me, so much is about the money downs and what you do on the money downs as an offense or as a quarterback. Okay, so we're going to run a play here, which is basically double deep curls, a curl over the middle, a flat, and then I'm assuming we're trying to get this back out here uh, into the flat, although he's got protection issues. So I just want you to look at this place. a third and long situation right here. And there's not a whole lot happening. We got a guy underneath this curl. We've got a guy underneath this curl. Now, this does pop open, even though that's usually the last read. We're reading curl flat to the outside, back to the inside. This linebacker does overplay it just a touch, but that is the, the final read on this play. Probably the one thing that comes open if you can find it. And again, to me, little details here that make it so hard. Okay, obviously we've lost the back back side. So to this side, we have nobody that's able to pull the underneath defender off with the flat. So if I'm a quarterback, I got to go to the other side. I got to go away from the pressure. But what we notice is Hayden Hurst is chipping right here. Okay, so he's chipping. And the problem with chipping on a play like this is the only way for us to be able to read through this with the right timing is I need my flat to get out here. I need him to be outside my curl so I can move that outside defender. When I move that outside defender, now as a quarterback, I know, okay, is my read flat to curl? Oh, he moved, it's curl. Then I can read this one that says, oh, he's taking, the next guy's taking it away and it can take me back to the inside. If my flat never gets there in time, right? Never gets there in time. See that high low right here? I've got no timing to be able to make this throw. Now, he did have the inside guy. I actually see him looking to the inside. So a lot of people will teach this, look inside first, okay? But the biggest thing to me with Bryce and his issues is look at this right here, okay? This is what I see as a quarterback. We're just about at the top of our routes, getting into the top of our routes. When we get to the top of our routes, quarterback needs to be throwing the football. That's what needs to happen. Look at his feet. His feet are parallel to the line of scrimmage, right? You can't throw that way, right? You can't create the power. You don't get direction. You don't get accuracy when your feet are like this. Too often, he's not set when he needs to be set, even though it would have been hard to get inside in most situations here because of the way this played out. He wasn't ready to throw it anyways. Now we lose based on coverage and based on timing and footwork. Okay, so here's a play. We're going to run down in the red zone. Gonna run a post here. Gonna run it out. We're gonna run back this way. Okay, so it's kind of like a pure progression starting here to the left-hand side. And here we are, okay? so. You guys tell me, right? In this situation, safety right there, tight, covered, 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 nowhere to really go here. Now again, not that this is the right read or where he goes with the football, but where else are you going with the football? I'd like him to read through it. Again, I'm always watching his eyes. Like I wanna know what he's doing. So he started over here to the left. Now his eyes are back in here. Not sure why his eyes are back in here if this is a pure progression. Maybe it's peak alert left and come back to the right. Uh, but I'm not really sure what that read is to the right. Maybe it's does this guy get influenced here so you can high low. What I would pretty much be thinking here is I'm gonna go and take this skinny right here. If we can beat the safety, that guy gets depth and takes it away. I'll peek to see if anything happens outside, but then I'm going to try to replace that linebacker with the shallow. This guy covers the shallow. I'm gonna come here and we're gonna work back from there, but his eyes kind of bouncing around. That's the other thing that I always look at with the quarterback is his eyes. His eyes tell you what he's thinking and you see his eyes start left, go right, back left. That to me is not the way you wanna play football. 
you want to make sure that you have a distinct understanding of who you're reading and why you're reading it so your eyes and body can move slow and you can be ready to make every throw. Okay, so this play right here, another third and longer situation. So they're going to run a play that I call Poco. So they're going to run this a little bit different. So they're going to run the post here and they're going to run the corner there. Okay, so normally when you run this concept, the next guy, the third guy is going to occupy this flat over here, right? So what we're really trying to do is get this high low over here to this side. So we've got a guy underneath and a guy on the second level over there. Okay, so on this particular play, what Carolina does is they run this guy underneath on a one step slant. So you can see where the marker is right here. All right, so that's the marker, um, you know, just on, on the 19 yard line. So they got a long way to go. Now, I, I don't know how they teach to read this, but if I've got this concept here, I have to think that more times than not, this corner route is the primary read, okay? Now, he could have come out and taken this one step right now if that's part of the option. Hey, if these guys get soft or if this guy gets soft, take that one step right now and then we'll live for another day. I just, again, I, I don't really know, but what I know is that if this guy's going to go inside, what's it gonna do? It's going to release this defender. We're not putting anybody in that defender's uh, vision, so he has to pull up to open up the corner. We're gonna let that guy go because this guy's in a position to come off and cover that, and then we've got a corner to cover the deep post, and we've got a linebacker to fall back into, right? So this is what you see. See the picture here for the quarterback. If I throw it here, well, there's a guy there that can drive and, and maybe make that play, but is in position. Well, I wanna to go to the corner over the top. Well, we released the flat defender because we took the outside guy and instead of putting him out here to try to grab that outside defender, we released him. So now he's there to fall back into the corner route and we've got really nothing here. If I wanna come back to the end, they've got a safety sitting back there on the backside. Not a lot happening here from a scheme standpoint. And then once again, watch Brock's, Brock's, watch Bryce's feet here. Look at his feet. Where are his feet? His feet are this way. Now again, maybe the read's over, now he's trying to make a play, whatever that is, but his feet are parallel to the line of scrimmage, not in a throwing posture or position, so not ready to get the ball out of his hands, and leads to a sack right here. Again, scheme, technique, lots of different things going on. Okay, so we've got a third and shorter here, so we're trying to create. Okay, we're trying to create a little bit of a rub here. Tight end steps inside, and now he's going outside. We're trying to create a rub with the outside guy on this defender right here. That's where Bryce is going here. But you see, right, technique-wise, we don't get what we want. He's going to the right spot. We got man-to-man. -man. We got this guy playing over the top. We should be able to get a winner right here but we don't execute it the right way. He's able to run through our rub. And because this guy's setting a rub, he doesn't run a route. So Bryce's eyes are over to that side and he's got absolutely nothing over there. So he's got to try to return back to the other side. Obviously he's late, right? If he went to this other side, oh, well shoot, you could say, right, well, yeah. He could have gone to that guy and maybe hit that guy right now for a first down, but I understand 100% why he's going there and it's designed specifically for this coverage. They just don't win. Now, once again, pressure coming. He's got to throw the football away. All right, couple things here. And again, this is a young quarterback that's learning. Okay, young quarterback that's learning. Now, there's nothing wrong with actually what he does here. So they're gonna send this guy in motion. This is a third and, and shorter situation. So like a third and three situation here because that always becomes important. But we're gonna send this guy in short motion and then this guy's just gonna run a swing route. We've got all these guys working back into the middle of the field. So what does that mean? That means if it's man to man, we've got a great shot if we snap this early to create some interference here for simply my swing runner right here, okay? so. If 
and you'll see. I'll play this out here. You see the motion start. See that? If he just snaps it, snap it quick. Now, again, I don't know if they teach that. I don't know if that's part of it because a big thing that you're trying to do when you go four strong, you'll notice four receivers strong, is you want to get the defense to move this direction, which they do, so you can get your one-on-one -on -one backside on the slant. So I understand why he's letting him go a little bit farther. But you're going to get the same kind of reaction. All I'm saying is if you can snap it quick, if you know and you see it, snap it. Because look at this right here. I mean, even with him getting past all this, look how deep he is. If we just toss this to our swing runner right here, he's walking for the first down because we're creating some interference in this guy to go over the top and try to figure it out. So see that linebacker going over the top, snap it sooner, boom, throw it to him right there. We got the first down to that side. But that's something that's gonna come with time, hopefully, and understanding of the big picture. He does and gets exactly what he wants. He gets everybody defensively in the underneath zones are all over on this side of the ball. So I'm going to go back to my one-on-one -on -one slant to the backside, but they jump inside of him. Doesn't fully win right there with contact. The other thing here that Bryce has got to get better at, I want you to watch how quickly he sets and throws this to the backside. See that? Turn, throw. Turn, throw. Here's what I know. Again, these tapes are as much about teaching as anything. Here's what I see. I see press man coverage on the backside slant. Anytime I see press coverage, what I know is it's gonna take him a little bit longer from a timing standpoint than if this corner was off. If that corner's off and he's got his free three-step slant, there's a particular timing that comes with that. As soon as my guy is jammed, I know it's gonna take him a little bit longer to set him, to come off the jam, and then to set his angle. So the timing's not going to be the same. Bryce, we got to get to the point where we understand we got press. I need you to hold. Hold on the back foot. Because see? See the contact? There's contact while the ball is being thrown. Well, it's going to screw you up timing-wise every time. You're throwing a timing slant. This is not a timing slant. I need to hold on my back foot. I need to let the slant come out of it. And then we have a chance. Still gets underneath him, but ball's out too soon. If I hold it another click on my back foot, put it on his body, we get a chance for a first down right there. So again, all kinds of great learning stuff for a young quarterback and things that you'd like to see him get a little bit of help. All right, so this is a tough one here. Okay, I talk about it all the time is that I think go routes are such a low percentage throw. We've got third and a bunch here. And so the call here is what I call hug, a hitch and go. So we got a hitch and go. And then on the other side, he's got all stop routes, hook routes, whatever you want to call it. So you get your one on one on the backside. And so you're kind of caught as a quarterback to go, what do I do? I get my one on one. I've got a middle high safety. Do I go with the special call, the double move call on this particular play and take a chance? Or because I have advantages, what do I mean by advantages? Notice this, right? They've got two underneath defenders to the backside and they've got two underneath defenders to the front side. So because I've got three underneath routes to the front side, I am going to have an advantage to the front side. So you're caught as a young quarterback or even as a quarterback in general going, okay, I got numbers to the right where I can have a great shot to pick up the first down, but they also called a uh, hitch and go on the backside. So do they want me to throw the hitch and go if I get one on one, even though I've got an advantage to the front side. So here we go. Third and long, we're going to go with the double move. Double move does not win. It's just a tight, low percentage throw, of course, which is why I don't like goes and lots of double moves on third down because unless it's just a wide open play, it's a low percentage throw. Then we go to the other side. What do we got? We got advantages. Maybe you got Adam Thielen. Oh, you feel the inside guy squeezing there. Now we go to number two and we've got that because this guy has widened. That guy squeezes. You go to your outside stop here. We've got advantages and opportunities front side, yet he goes with the play call on the double move. Doesn't win. No real chance to complete that. We're punting again. All right, so this play, we're gonna run influence, seam, 
big in, shallow. Okay, so might be able to get one of the seams if you get a middle high look. You get a two safety high look. What we're really reading is this high low over here to this side. Okay, so it's a third and long situation. Once again, you notice the theme there, right? They're not winning on first and second down, which is leading to some bad situations on third down. Look at Bryce's feet once again. His feet, once again, are parallel to the line of scrimmage. You can't throw the football. You can't throw it. You can't throw it accurately. You can't throw it quickly. You got to try to reset at this point. But his feet are already to that position. What we're going to be reading is this hook defender right here. Okay, so if that hook defender stays down, let this ball go over the top. He gets depth, then you want to hit your shallow, but he's not in a position to throw it. We'll let it play out a little bit longer. There you go. See the window coming. See the window here for the big end as we clear everything else out. This guy's starting to come down. Yes, there's pressure right now on him, but these are the kind of things with anticipation, getting back, stepping up in the pocket, get a little more depth. That's the other thing. Tie in the depth of your drop to the route. He's already set. We talk about this all the time. He's already set. So his clock is saying, I'm set. I should be throwing it. Doesn't get enough depth. Get more depth. Set this deeper so you can step up in the pocket and be ready to throw. He's quick to set. His timing's not good. Play isn't even developed yet, and he's already starting to move because he's been hitching the ball from back at the top of his drop. And that's one thing more than anything that I think has given him problems is his technique. Technique. Look at this again. Look where he's at. Top of his drop. He's on his toes. He's bouncing. His feet are parallel to the line of scrimmage. Right off the bat, get back and get set. Bouncing, feet are in the wrong spot. Where do you want to throw it? And that's the other thing because you'll notice on this particular play, they've got double ends coming back here. So everything is coming back to the inside. Never need to have my feet set out here to a throw outside the numbers. So feet bad, parallel to the line of scrimmage, not ready to throw. And there's not a throw to the front side, but stay with your reads. I'm gonna tell quarterbacks this all the time. It's really hard to go from one side of the field to the other. If you get a look that tells you to go to the front side, which is this big end because of the look that we have on the back end, and then we've got a hook underneath it. So similar to the last in shallow, it's the same idea. Read your hook defender. You chose the left side. Your feet and eyes are to the left side. So just read it out. This defender gets depth. Replace him. Replace him. Make the game simple. No reason to go back to the back side where you don't know what's happening back side because you haven't started there. Started front side because you like the look. Read out the look. Take the check down right here to the front side. Again, I don't think he probably gets the first down. Maybe he does, but look at all the space that's right here. Just give it to him. Give it to him now. You're not holding the football. The read has said, give it to him. Give the ball to him right now. Now we throw the check down late to the backside. We don't get much, but it's just too much work. Stay to the front side. Be ready. Get the ball out to your check down off your read and let him make a play for you. All right, so we're gonna have a post back here, really dead because that free safety's on that side. We're gonna come with a shallow and a cross from there, and then we'll come back late over here. So the read is check the post, don't have the post. Okay, so the biggest thing for me with this is, again, we have the post. What you have to understand as a quarterback that everything else is coming back to this side. So. Bryce brings his eyes back here, and I understand the idea that this is dead, so I don't have anything on that side of the ball, so to speak, that starts. So I want to bring my eyes back to the other side. Keep your eyes to where the guys are coming from. So, okay, he's dead. Well, this is where everybody's coming. That's where the shallow's coming. I want my eyes there and my feet there so I'm ahead of the throw. They do a great job of cutting this and covering it. But my next read is to that side as well. So keep my eyes and my feet over there so I can verify what's going on in front of me because my read is coming back there. Now, you see it. This guy gets jammed, so this guy gets covered. This guy's covered pretty tight, but if that guy was out of there, there would be a window for me to throw it up over here. And then, yes, number four comes open right here, but Bryce is already moving. That's a lot to ask for a young quarterback. 
but just not getting a lot of help here. And you see Chicago covers it really, really well. Man-to-man -man coverage. Oh, you think that you're going to have man-to-man -man right here and you're going to be in great shape running away from him. They drop the safety down who cuts this, takes everything away. Another tight, tough situation for the young quarterback, although he does a nice job scrambling and make a play, making a play for that first down. Okay, so a couple things right here. So this to me looks like what you would call another pure progression play. Here to the corner, back to the flat. Okay, then we're gonna run out here and clear out and then we're bringing everything else back to him. So normally it's one, two, three, four, regardless of the coverage. It's just what we call a pure progression and we go. So what I'd like to see him do is for some reason he starts left. Now maybe they're saying, hey, you can read the different sides. You got man-to-man -man coverage on the left side. So maybe you like that, no problem. But if I've got man-to-man -man coverage, what I need to see is who's covering the back. So in this particular case, it's the safety coming down to cover the back. So with that kind of relationship, I want to see that because look at all the space that I have for my back as he goes out to the flat. Making the game easier on yourself as well. Boom, take the flat. Take the flat right there. Put the ball on your flat right here. This guy's gotta come down and make a tackle. That's as good as anything that you've got on this particular play. Instead, he goes back to the other side, which, okay, no problem, because that's what would happen. If this guy's down tight, still like this as a runaway, and this is a runaway against man, he wins makes a nice throw right here, even though it's tight coverage, not a lot of separation as you see on a lot of these plays, but good ball, gotta make that catch. Not sure if we get the first down or not right there, even if he makes the catch, but it's just tough. It's just not easy with what's going on on third down here. All right, so we're coming out. This particular play, like this play, we're clearing this out. We've got a shallow route coming here. Adam Thielen coming out of the backfield and running a quick post to that side. Nice job, we get an overrun, we get a clearing in this area right here. So now look, look, look at his posture. Look where he's at right here, love it. Knees are bent, feet are in the ground. He's in a throwing posture and position. Oh, what happens? Boom, makes a great throw, puts the ball on the money. He's on time. Like to see him hold on that back foot just a little bit instead of being a little antsy, but that's the best that we've seen him being ready and being able to get that ball out, hitting a tight window, being accurate with the football. And what happens? We pick up the first down. We're rolling. Need more of that. Okay. Another nice job right here. So we're going to run this play I call hinge. Okay. So it's a hitch and another hook to the inside and an in. Only thing I would say is I always like to read these outside in. So always try to make the game easier. So if everything is condensed inside, read it out here and just take your hitch. Corners off, take your hitch, make it easier. Once this guy buzzes hard out to take away the hitch, now we know we've got a true two on one off of the inside right here and no problem. So really would like him to see through the big picture first. Boom, go take your hitch on the outside. Go take it, it's a steal, okay? He does it. He works inside where he still has this high low. Nice job right here. He gets depth. Just put it on your guy. Get back, get it out. And again, I'd like to see it a little bit quicker. See the little bounce with his feet. Like to see him more balanced because again, when you bounce with your feet and you see, notice, notice his feet, right? His feet are outside of his body back here. Can't throw that way. He's got to recover by bringing those feet back forward, right? So now he brings those feet back to that position we saw in the last play. Now he's ready to throw. I wanna see him play in this position more than have to get back to this position, but nice, quick decision. You get depth right there, boom, get the ball out to your underneath guy and let him do something for you. Okay, it's one of their fourth down situations late in the game. Similar to what we saw earlier with the tight end. Do a nice job here. Not really trying to create the rub as much, clearing out, starting inside, getting this guy to move, and then bouncing back here, getting to the outside. Nice job, good play design, guys open, better with his timing. 
right? His feet are still a little bit sideways, but the ball is going to be thrown out here. So he's lined up better right here. It just takes a quick hitch, balls out, good throw, moving the chains. Okay, tough one here because of the, the simulated pressure. But again, hitch out here. Okay, number two is running a seam. So we're looking for that against press man. We get a seam right there and we get an inside fade. And then we're going to run another hook on the inside. So it's similar in essence to the play that we just saw. Remember this number two had an in instead of the inside fade right there. But it's similar from the standpoint that if we don't get the perfect look for that inside fade, I'd like to see you read it one to two, and then they're gonna bring a shallow back here as their three into his vision. So read, outside in, outside in, outside in. Start outside, force that guy to get with, because then when that guy gets with, right, that means we've got a read off of the next guy. Does he cover the hook? Does he cover the shallow? Again, they're kind of coming into the same area, but you get the idea. If he reads it outside in, he gets an easy completion. Now, I see what he sees. They're simulating pressure. This guy's up in the gap. So if he feels like this guy gets wide, he's looking to take that because visually it's open right there. Doesn't see the popper, and the popper's the one that gets in the way right here as he's dropping into his zone. And again, I'm not sure what we're trying to do bringing this guy into this i'd like to see us be able to to replace or do something where they're in different zones but like to see the outside read first force them to take it away force him to run out and cover it and then work back where you can negotiate the next guy in space just misses that popper which is a tough thing right it's tough to see all that this guy steps in and engages we think that he's coming on pressure one of the hardest things in football is these guys that are showing pressure and then they pop out at the last second. You get your eyes away from it. You're reading the rest of the coverage and stuff like this, unfortunately, can happen. But start with that initial read to the outside and we're in great shape. 